So uh, I'm Pietro from Smart IR. We are a space and defense company. We are very new to space. Uh, so my presentation is not going to be very technical, more like uh, uh, easy listening. I think it's good for, uh, for you. <laughs> so uh, we are trying to develop a, a thermal control system for uh, satellite. Actually, uh, more uh, for big sat, not really uh, pocket cubes. But pocket cubes uh, uh, come very handy because in order to validate our technology, we will uh, use uh, one of these uh, cubes. So, uh, as you know, uh, space uh, poses very uh, ch various challenges, and thermal challenges probably is one of them very tough to solve. And uh, as you can see, like you have like extreme uh, temperature fluctuation. There is vacuum, so the only way to transfer the heat is via radiation, and that is quite challenging. And then, uh, of course, the satellites are becoming more and more powerful. So, if you consider, for example, this Eurostar, you have a, a payload power of uh, 25 kilowatts. So, it's something quite impressive. And if you, can, if you consider that 60% of that payload is converted into heat, then you have to really find a way to dissipate this uh, excessive heat. And uh, one way uh, to do that is basically by using a, a radiator that is a, a surfaces that is emitting uh, the heat into the disk space uh, in order to avoid uh, baking uh, your uh, electronics. <laughs> so uh, conventional radiators are normally like uh, always emitting. So uh, there are uh, sometimes, uh, for example, like if you consider eclipse size of the orbit, where, uh, where the satellite is in the cold side, okay, there is not uh, sun, uh, or when the payload is switched off, uh, this can produce uh, some overcooling. So the satellite is becoming too cold, and in order to prevent that, normally you use some uh, heaters to heat up uh, the satellite back again, but this is consuming a lot of power. And uh, especially like if you think about it, if you are in the cold side of the orbit, there is no sun, so the solar panel are off. And so this is will require even more uh, powerful batteries. So what we are trying to propose here is uh, an active thermal radiators. So a radiator that you can basically decide when to emit heat or when to retain it. And this is kind of what we are trying to develop in Smart IR. Uh, so there are already some uh, active radiators. Uh, some of them are kind of commercially available. You have like some mechanical solution that have been uh, used. You have, for example, thermal louvers uh, or shutters that basically are uh, blinders that you can open and close uh, on demand. Uh, they are quite useful uh, because they allow you to really modulate uh, the emissivity so you are able to decide when to emit the heat. But on the other side, they are quite heavy and bulky. And then, like, uh, there are some uh, reliability issues. So, uh, mechanical parts can uh, merge together. Can you have this cold wedding that can happen? And this basically, like, uh, is stop uh, the mechanism. So, you're not able to switch it on and off anymore. Uh, additionally to that, they are quite heavy, as I mentioned. And uh, also, if you consider deployable radiation, uh, radiator, so basically are surfaces that you can deploy uh, on demand. Uh, there is like a, a thermal transfer issue because sometimes you have like poor thermal contract uh, and you have to use uh, thermal straps that are not so uh, convenient. On the contrary, we have like a optic, optical solution where you really try to uh, tune the, the, mat the material optical properties. Uh, you can do it, for example, with thermochromic materials. Uh, basically, these are materials that you heat up and they are changing their uh, color, they are changing their emissivity. For example, you can see in that image over there where you have this hand uh, that is warm, that is in contact of the surfaces and is changing the optical properties. Of course, it's not in the visible, but it's going to be in the infrared. Uh, and then you can have also electrochromic materials where you are applying a small voltages and you can change the optical properties. Uh, these are quite useful uh, technology because you have no mechanical means. They are kind of lightweight. They consume, uh, uh, in general, low power consumption and they are quite easy to integrate. There are some uh, uh, limitations is that uh, normally the modulation windows is quite limited. And uh, at the moment, they are not really commercially available. So this is why uh, our uh, smart IR is trying to, let's see, 
Come on. Okay. Let's try to uh, develop it. So what we are trying to develop is like a, a radiator that uh, enable like 0 0.6 emissivity modulation. That is quite high. Um, so uh, I don't know if you are familiar with, uh, probably you are, <laughs> within uh, ups, uh, alpha and epsilon. So alpha is the way, uh, so basically a radiator, in order to function properly, you need to be able to reject the visible light of the sun. But the, in the meantime, you are able to uh, emit in the infrared. And this is kind of what we have to do. So we having like a, a emissivity modulation in the infrared that can tune from 0 0.8 to 0 0.2. Uh, uh, solar abs uh, absorption that is quite low, that is very important. And then, uh, of course, the power consumption is quite limited, is one watt per meter square, so quite low. And the weight as well is 100 grams per meter square, so that is very good things. Um, so if you can consider, for example, like a, a satellite of 100 kilo, uh, our case studies suggest that we can save up to 10% in, uh, in power saving uh, by not running these uh, heaters. And uh, as well, this uh, uh, will, uh, of course, uh, uh, also uh, be a saving in the weight. Uh, here there is, uh, can we, is there like a, okay, like that. Okay, so uh, the device structure is three layers. We have a top layer that is made of uh, graphene. I don't know if you're aware about this material. It's a nanomaterial uh, that has a really uh, extremely uh, beautiful uh, thermal properties and optical properties. We have a middle layer that is basically a separator like in a battery, and then you have a back electrode. And when we are applying a small voltage between the top and the bottom electrode, we are able to uh, switch uh, this device on and to suppress uh, the infrared emissivity. So if you look at here, this is kind of like um, an infrared uh, uh, thermogram. So it's two IR cameras that took two pictures. Uh, we have our device that is the square, uh, the center, and uh, the background is hot. So we have like a hot plate that is uh, uh, heating up our device. And when we are turning on or off the device, the device will appear cold, but actually the temperature didn't change. It's just that uh, the emissivity is just uh, changed. And so it's emitting less, and so it looks like cold. Uh, okay. So uh, in order to validate our technology, we are uh, following two approaches. One is more like on-ground testing uh, uh, validation, so like it's more like conventional. Uh, where another one is more uh, exciting, in my opinion, and is like in orbit demonstration. And uh, we are planning to have three, three missions in the next three years. So we are gonna have like uh, the first mission with Alba Orbital and uh, Hydra with 1.5p. Uh, subsequently, we are looking for like uh, a 3p or a CubeSat size, and then uh, go in 2026 with a microsat, so with 10 kilo uh, satellite. So it's, it's quite ambitious plan, I think, because we are very new to space, so we'll have to, we have a lot of uh, uh, to learn. But, uh, but yeah, it's quite exciting. <laughs> Uh, so, in terms of ground, on ground testing, we had, uh, we just finished a, a phase of, uh, of testing where we perform like uh, ambient thermal cycling, uh, TVAC between minus 70 to plus 70, vibrational tests, uh, heavy ions. And then uh, the next phase uh, will be done with, uh, hopefully, with this, uh, will be sponsored by ESA. Uh, and this will push our TRL, uh, TRL level between five to six. We are going to perform atomic oxygen. I, I, I haven't heard anyone doing atomic oxygen here, so it's quite uh, interesting to see then uh, what you think about it. Uh, ambient thermal cycling, TVAC, vibrational, and then we are going to do a lot of uh, radiational tests uh, because our end goal is to go to LEO, but then also to MIO and GEO. Um, so uh, regarding the mission, we started with, uh, we call it mission zero. We had the opportunity to fly our radiator on a bigger sat. It uh, was like a, a one, one U sat integrated into a, a bigger sat. But unfortunately, uh, it got postponed to we don't know when. So uh, we had to kind of uh, reinvent it and pivot it onto uh, this uh, mission because we have everything was ready to fly. So what we decided to do, was to go uh, use, doing a stratosphere mission. So it's not space, but uh, it really give us uh, some idea of how our technology will work. So uh, in this case here, we have our, uh, my, this is my, our device. 
and uh, we have like a lot of pixels. We can use it as a kind of uh, uh, infrared display. And here we wrote kind of smart IR in the infrared. Uh, the mission uh, was like a 30 kilometer uh, high. Uh, the temperature fluctuation were quite uh, significant. It was between minus 50 to plus 40. The duration was approximately two hours. And then the fact uh, that was kind of positive is that we didn't have much weight restriction or power restriction. So we had like a two kilo uh, payload and a power of uh, 50 watt. And we were able to really characterize fully our device. And we generated approximately two, two, uh, 200 gigabytes of, uh, of data. So it was very, uh, quite, quite intensive uh, mission. The pro of this uh, approach was really that uh, enabled us to de risk a bit our, our technology. And the fact that we could recover our, uh, our payload was like, uh, very, very important to understand what we could improve. Uh, and uh, we found out some issue with the MI shielding and also with the device fabrication. So I think that was an uh, extremely important lesson for us. Uh, additionally to that, as we didn't have like, any kind of payload restriction, we had two infrared cameras and two high resolution cameras that took like, this beautiful shot and, uh, and really enabled us to really go deep and understand all the, uh, all the problems that uh, this device might have. And then uh, we had like 100% redundancy. We had two uh, onboard computer and as well two Raspberry Pi. <laughs> so that is uh, it was quite good. Uh, cons, unfortunately, it was in space. So that is uh, <laughs> the reality. Uh, here I have like a small video. I hope it will work. Uh, so this is a technology that Enjoy. <laughs> by applying voltage without changing the physical temperature, we can control uh, thermal radiation. In the space uh, for satellite that's moving around the VO orbit, the, the challenge is the thermal regulation of the satellite. There are a lot of electronic equipment sitting on the satellite and we generate a lot of power. So satellite should radiate this power. It's a bit laggy. Today's mission was the first way to the risk of our space validation process. We're going to go to space. We want to see how the device survived the launch and the device that operates in a small amount of the bottom of the recovery. The challenge is there's no air in this space. Yeah, we had drones, but it's quite cool. So, with this device, we can control the temperature of the device and we can control the thermal radiation of the device. So, this is basically what we can control. <laughs> yeah, so just a quick break. Uh, so our next mission uh, is going to be with uh, Alba and uh, Hydra. We are going to have like uh, a three uh, devices. One will sit like inside the, uh, the satellite, and this will enable us just to uh, really understand uh, if our device can sustain uh, to, to stay into space without uh, any issue but also will de risk a bit the mission. So like, we are still developing like, uh, this uh, anti-reflective visible coating. So the fact that uh, this device is inside the, the satellite will really help us to de risk this mission. Then we're going to have a device that will, uh, uh, will be at the, at the very uh, out, outer side of the satellite. And this will be like kind of our uh, IoT. So if we're able to demonstrate that our device is working, this will be a very big push for the technology. And then at the back, uh, we're going to have the, some sensors to test uh, this uh, white coating to understand like how long uh, this uh, device is, uh, can perform in space and uh, how quickly is degrade, is degrading. So. Um, what else I could say is like, uh, yeah, I think uh, pocket cubes seems like a, a very good way for uh, startups that doesn't have like really much uh, money and can uh, afford like bigger missions to go into space and really test uh, our, uh, our technology. And uh, yeah, I think that is, uh, was quite quick for maybe. <laughs> but if you have any questions, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> So is everybody questions? I see you're going to Sansa. Very quick one. What kind of DRL are you aiming at with this uh, 